హలో స్టూడెంట్స్ సో వెల్కమ్ బ్యాక్ టు మై వీడియో సో ఐ థింక్ వీ హ్యావ్ డిస్కస్ టోటలీ ఫోర్ వీడియోస్ ఆన్ లేజర్స్ రైట్ సో ఇన్ విచ్ వీ కమ్ అక్రాస్ ద బేసిక్స్ ఆఫ్ లేజర్స్ అండ్ హౌ ద లేజర్స్ ఆర్ ప్రొడ్యూస్ బేస్డ్ ఆన్ డిఫరెంట్ కండిషన్స్ ఓకే వాట్ ఆర్ ద మెయిన్ కండిషన్స్ టు ప్రొడ్యూస్ ఎనీ లేజర్ అండ్ వాట్ ఈస్ ద డిఫరెన్స్ బిట్వీన్ ఆర్డినరీ లైట్ అండ్ లేజర్ ఎట్సెట్రా ఓకే నౌ టు ప్రొడ్యూస్ ద లేజర్ బీమ్ సో వీ హ్యావ్ సటన్ డివైజెస్ వీ నీడ్ సటన్ డివైజెస్ బట్ హౌ టు డిజైన్ దట్ డివైజ్ ఓకే వాట్ ఆర్ ద బేసిక్ రిక్విజిట్స్ ఫార్ Uh, to produce any uh, device which produces the laser okay so that particular uh, topic is called actually basic components of a laser okay so in this video we are going to focus on the concept of what are the basic needs of the production of laser in a device so we'll come across different type of lasers of course okay for example in general we can say there are solid state laser okay there are gaseous laser and then there are liquid laser okay like dye laser and semiconductor laser etc okay so for all these kind of devices so we have certain common components okay what are that compo common components so three main components will come across so we can mention them as an active medium so in any laser device so one should have an active medium which supports for population inversion and stimulated emission etc to produce a laser okay so that is called act active medium and then so we need a pumping source so we need a pumping source for what to excite the atoms from ground state to excited state okay by some means we need to uh, excite the atoms in the given system so that excitation process is done by the pumping source okay that is one one more important component and then an optical resonant cavity okay this is for actually amplification of the laser light for uh, maximum energy okay or to achieve the coherence in the laser beam we need a optical resonant cavity it is also called resonator okay now let us discuss one by one how this active medium will support for the production of laser so look at first one that is an active medium so how do you define this active medium a medium in which population inversion can be achieved so you know that one of the basic uh, requirement or basic condition for the production of laser is population inversion what do you mean population inversion so we know that number of atoms in the ground state is normally greater than the number of atoms in the excited state but after excitation so number of atoms in the excited state should be greater than number of atoms in the ground state that means n2 okay n2 should be greater than n1 that is called actually the population inversion so that can be achieved in certain system in which the metastable state exists okay where the atoms can accumulate for longer time okay so after certain time okay after certain particular given instant of time the population inversion is achieved in some system with some certain atoms in which the energy levels are supporting to get the population inversion between the energy levels okay so such a uh, medium is required here as the active medium to achieve the population inversion okay and further lasing transition can be produced is called the active medium so lasing transition means so there will, there should be a transition of atoms from excited state to ground state to produce the required number of photons for the laser that is called actually lasing transition okay so this process should achieve in certain medium that particular medium where this acts so that particular mechanism is possible is called actually the active medium okay now the active medium consists of two parts so basically we have two parts in any given laser active medium so what are that so we call it as a host medium okay or the basis okay the base for the uh, production of laser is called actually the host medium and then an active centers in which again there are some atoms which supports the uh, energy level to get the population inversion you know so that particular atoms are actually called the active centers okay so to uh, brief okay now to brief you can give some examples here in ruby laser as i told ruby laser is a solid state laser okay so it is a uh, it is a crystal ruby crystal so in which aluminum oxide crystal acts as a host okay in which some impurities are added what are that impurities you know you know the chromium ions okay so cr3 plus actually they are called very minute number of atoms are added into the crystal that impurities are added into the crystal so that particular impurities act added in the crystal acts as active medium here so you should remember that the entire aluminum oxide crystal acts as a host in which the impurities present 
chromium 3 plus ion acts as active centers is it clear and similarly if you consider the gas laser you know helium neon laser is a gas laser in which uh, helium is abundant in the gas okay so that acts as a host here whereas neon ions or neon atoms are very less in the number okay so in the mixture of helium and neon so neon atoms are very less compared to helium so but that neon atoms acts as active centers to support for the uh, laser action here okay like that so we need a, a active medium in which host medium should be there and active centers also should be there in the system okay that is system or that a, that kind of medium is called actually active medium so that is one of the important thing required for any laser device okay next one is a pumping source okay in case of pumping so the process what do you mean pumping as i told the process of supplying energy to the higher energy state is called the pumping so we need to supply some energy to the atom so that the atom should excite and go to the excited energy state so that process is called actually the pumping now look at here some of the pumping techniques some of the uh, pumping techniques are uh, optical pumping electrical pumping you know uh, direct conversion and chemical pumping so these are the normally used pumping techniques okay so in optical pumping normally a light source or you can say flashlight bulb is used in the solid state laser okay so as i said a ruby laser you know it is a solid state laser where we are using the technique of optical pumping for uh, excitation of the active centers here okay then the second one is electrical pumping okay so in which the electric field causes ionization in the gas laser so ionization should take place in the uh, gaseous mixture some active centers will be there you know as i said so that kind of active centers gets ionized after applying the electric field between the two electrodes okay using the two electrodes one can achieve the ionization in the gas so that process is called is called actually electrical pumping okay then the third one is the direct conversion so in which so electrical energy directly converted to light energy so that process is actually called the direct conversion okay and the last one is chemical pumping so you know that in case of some uh, medium so by by some means chemical reaction may take place okay the chemical reaction also excites the atoms and molecules as you know so that process is called actually the chemical pumping okay so by one of the method okay by one of the method we need to excite the atoms for to achieve the population inversion between the two energy levels okay depending upon the mechanism okay we call it as different methods called optical pumping electrical pumping direct conversion or chemical pumping so the techniques are different in different type of lasers okay so in general what we call it as it is called as pumping clear so then the third component required for the laser action is an optical resonant cavity so that part now let us discuss so first you write down up to this here okay now look at this third main component that is optical resonant cavity okay so an optical resonant resonator or optical resonant cavity is a system of mirrors okay we have system of two mirrors between which the active medium is placed okay so active medium is one of the component and that active medium should be kept in between the two parallel mirrors okay then it looks like this you see this so active medium is here okay it may be a solid or it may be a gaseous mixture whatever it is but so this active medium should be bound between the two mirrors m1 and m2 okay so that it looks like a, a pipe okay a long pipe of let's say of length l okay so in between the two mirrors okay the the photons emitted due to the various processes or by the mechanisms gets reflected by the two mirrors m1 and m2 okay so due to the continuous reflection by the two mirrors what happens the amplification takes place between the photons and then uh, the unique uh, direction of the photons is also possible so all photons can travel in the same direction to achieve the coherence in the beam so this process to get the amplification and to get the coherence in the laser system so one should have this kind of laser cavity okay laser cavity or we can say optical resonant cavity so now the two mirrors along which uh, along with the active medium form a cavity so so 
what we can say now what is laser cavity here the two mirrors along with the active medium okay so that is forming a cavity called laser cavity right and then two types of waves exist in the cavity because due to the continuous reflection by the two mirrors we can expect the two waves are formed here right in the uh, active medium so one type of wave moves towards the right side okay the other wave moves in the left side so like this so the superposition of the such waves takes place in the active medium due to the traveling of opposite direction of the two waves here right so now these two types of waves may interfere as i said the interference takes place right the interfere either it may be constructive or destructive right so there may be a constructive interference or destructive interference so that depending upon what depending upon the phase difference between the two mediums what is the phase difference between the two waves okay and you know that phase difference depends upon the path also path traveled by the two waves between the two mirrors again so what is that path so that is equal to length l okay length of the active medium so we can write now for constructive interference that l is equal to n lambda by 2 okay so where we can say n is the just an integer greater than 0 n is a integer and lambda is the wavelength of the laser light so whatever the laser light traveling in between the two mediums so the wavelength of that laser light is lambda r okay so in terms of wavelength we can write the equation like uh, by cross multiplication lambda is equal to 2l by n okay so if you know the length of the reson resonant cavity and depending upon the value of n okay first order second order etc so you can calculate the wavelength of the laser light produced in the cavity okay so now this process is called what so it is called actually the amplification process right so optical amplification in general right so since the resonant mirrors pro provide positive feedback here to the photons amplified by the medium so we can call it as optical amplification the process is called optical amplification process okay so once if you are able to uh, achieve all these three components in any uh, given laser then only it is possible to produce the uh, quality laser quality laser means what so it should have highly monochromatic chromaticity highly coherent beam and highly energetic also so such a quality laser can be produced with the help of all these three components okay so next class we will discuss the examples of such a devices which can produce a laser beam okay so i think we have to discuss one solid state laser and one gaseous laser so the best example for uh, solid state laser so solid state laser is the ruby laser and the best example for gaseous laser is helium neon laser okay so that two you will discuss in the next class or in the next video okay so thank you for watching this video then